despite an outrage over his inclusion in Big Boss, Sajid Khan accused by nine women, nine women of sexual abuse and assault continues to be celebrated on Big Boss. I'm Barkadat, you're with the Mojo Story. We continue to follow up on why this man is not even being asked about the allegations on one of India's most successful reality shows. Sajid Khan, of course, is a powerful name in the film industry and that power today is showing. Remember that there were nine different women who at the height of India's Me Too movement actually called out Sajid Khan for his absolutely despicable predator-like behavior. Now, he, it seems, has to pay no price at all, whereas the women who called him out are having to pay a price, a price of trauma, a price of heartbreak, and a price of anger. Well, while many women have, in fact, given up on the entire Me Too movement, the Delhi Commission for Women Chief Swati Maliwal did write to Colors TV, the host platform of this show, asking for Sajid Khan to be dropped. What she found was instead of responsiveness from the network, she was threatened, abused, trolled, even receiving rape threats on her Instagram feed. Let's go across now to Ms. Swati Maliwal, the head of the Delhi Commission for Women, to talk a little bit about what this means for women, whether this has meant a dead end for the Me Too movement, and what it means for the nine women and maybe countless others who must be feeling so betrayed at this moment. Swati ji, thank you for your time. Let me start by asking you about what made you write to Colors TV and whether you've heard back from the network at all. And I think we've lost you there. There, you're back with us. Go ahead, Swati ji. Yeah. Let me unmute you. I yeah, go ahead. Yeah. I'm very concerned about what has happened. You see this man, he clearly appears to be a sexual predator. Not one, not two, but so many women came across. They spoke up against his sexual advances and almost everyone has a similar story. For instance, one of the girls, she was 17 years old when she auditioned for a movie called Houseful 4. And she has stated that Sajid Khan, while during the audition, asked her to strip and told her that she will get the role if he strip, if she strips. In another case, one of the other aspiring actresses, she has stated that in a movie called Hamshakals, uh, this uh, woman, when she was auditioning, Sajid Khan asked her to strip and told her that she, she will get the role if he likes what he sees. There have been number of instances where journalists have said that this man uh, flashed his private parts during an interview. So one can imagine the kind of mindset this man has. And despite all of that, despite so many women coming out and speaking up against uh, uh, his atrocities, and nothing has happened, no action has been taken. Today, this man is being celebrated on prime time national television in a show called Big Boss, where everybody is talking about him and he's been given this wonderful opportunity of whitewashing all his wrongs. It's almost like a relaunch for him. So I don't understand that why is it that we have we had so many instances in America where a lot of women came out uh, during the Me Too movement and action, actual action was taken against several such offenders. And in India, you have these 10 women coming out, speaking out on something so sensitive, so important, and no action is taken. So I have written a letter to the Information and Broadcasting Minister, uh, Union Minister, and I have requested him that this man needs to be thrown out from Big Boss. An investigation needs to be done, and he should be actually behind bars. You see, how is it that how so many women are complaining the same kind of complaints? Some investigation yeah. has to be done. And despite that, neither, neither has any investigation happened. This man is just because of the clout he enjoys and because of the power he enjoys within the industry, is able to just walk away free. And you have had to uh, face your, I'll come back to the case in a moment, but ever since you wrote this letter to the uh, Information and Broadcasting Minister, you've had to counter threats and abuse of your own. Uh, speak a little bit about what the last few days have been like for you, uh, Swati. 
I raised this issue. I wrote a letter. That's a part of my statutory duty. I'm a statutory autonomous body. I head the Delhi Commission for Women. And when I do that, I haven't got any response from the union minister till now. But I have got a lot of uh, uh, online trolling. But more importantly, I've got these very serious complaints, uh, sorry, serious threats, where I've been told that if Sajid Khan, when he comes out of uh, the Big Boss show, he will come and rape me. And these are two uh, accounts on Instagram. I have been given DMs through that. And I have written a letter to the Delhi police because I want an FIR to be registered. And I want serious action to be taken against these men, whoever they are. And uh, I fail to understand how is it that a person like Sajid Khan can have any kind of a popular support. I frankly don't think that he has. In fact, I see a lot of online uh, 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 hatred against him for the kind of abuse that he has done of, uh, of women. Uh, I can see that. But uh, now this, comp uh, this threats have been given to me and I have taken it up with the Delhi police and I want that uh, arrests should be done. In any case, in today's environment, it is very unfortunate that... Uh, online abuse online trolling online death and rape threats even mm -hmm. to little toddlers is now the commonplace uh, scenario but to do it to the delhi commission for women chief because she has taken up an issue and because she is doing her statutory role it is completely thwarting the work of the government and uh, serious action needs to be taken Absolutely. And I think it really captures, uh, in a sense, the reality of our times. Uh, there's almost a normalization of this kind of abuse online, violence, sexual violence online. You've received rape threats. Did that make you feel, of course, it made you feel very angry and disgusted, but did it also make you feel vulnerable? Because when we see these kind of threats online, a lot of women then say we won't speak. Yes, ma'am, of course, it made me feel vulnerable and not just vulnerable uh, because of uh, the kind of rape threats that I got. Uh, I always already feel vulnerable. Um, we are in the line of attack because uh, we've handled over one lakh cases in the past six years. And all these cases, some criminal or the other, we've got them behind bars. So obviously, uh, I feel vulnerable on a daily basis. Not only are the criminals against us, not only such like-minded people who think alike as the criminals, they are against us. We also have uh, several FIRs that have been registered by the Delhi police against me. So I feel vulnerable on a daily basis. Many times Delhi police has actually approached me and told me that uh, they want to give me security because they feel that my life is under threat. But I have denied it because I really feel that if I start taking security, I mean, I'm just completely against that idea because I should feel that vulnerable, that feeling should not be amiss because that's the feeling of each and every woman in this country. Everybody feels vulnerable at some time or the other and I don't want to miss it. So I've denied security. But yes, in the past two days, obviously, when you get these kind of threats, then your family, then your friends, uh, they get concerned and there's a lot of pressure on you that, uh, you know, I mean, for instance, one of my friends just uh, messaged me that why do you do this? Why do you uh, take up uh, these issues? You know that, you know, these are powerful people. You should not do it. And uh, so uh, these kind of well-meaning people also you get uh, who say such things. But obviously, I will uh, do what I have to do because uh, till the time I'm on this post, uh, I am going to uh, do justice to it. But to, but to answer your question, definitely, uh, I feel vulnerable and I feel that every moment. Yeah, and as you said, every woman feels that on some day or the other, if not every day. Uh, you know, I want to take you back to uh, what you said about Sajid Khan should be behind bars, uh, you know, uh, flashing his uh, his private parts at women, making a kind of quid pro quo uh, environment for them to get work. Uh, and, 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 and even saying to one woman, if I give you 100 crores, will you have sex with a dog? Uh, the complaints against him are well documented. Uh, but there are critics of the Me Too movement uh, who would argue today that if you do not criminalize your complaint, uh, then you can't expect endless penalty and therefore today there's an inflection point about the entire me too conversation me too was supposed to provide a safe space for women who had been betrayed by process by how long it took by the fact that the judicial system is often hostile the police system is often hostile to have a space to talk about things that were taboo how do you look at it today do you feel looking at sajid khan celebration that me too has failed us or do you feel that it tells us that there's no option but to eventually go to the courts, go to the police, that posh guidelines, the Vishaka guidelines are not enough in themselves? 
Ma'am, I think that the entire justice system and the entire uh, law enforcement mechanisms have failed. I don't think that uh, uh, the Me Too campaign has failed. I think it was very important. I think everybody somehow got together and uh, it, it's not as if uh, that only these nine people have faced this from Sajid Khan. I don't believe it. I think hundreds of others probably might have experienced something like that. If not hundreds, but definitely the number would be much more than nine. Uh, uh, it's just because these women actually were brave enough to come out and uh, to talk about something that has been happening for a long time uh, that one was able to you know say that okay these women are the ones I'm sure there, there have been many others so I don't think that Me Too campaign uh, failed us I think the systems of this country have somewhere failed us I think that it's very unfortunate that despite the Me Too campaign being there uh, no committee was set up by the government of India I think it very easily at least a committee could have been set up by the government of India it could have been headed by uh, a retired uh, uh, judge of the Supreme Court of the one of the high courts and uh, these cases each and every complaint could actually have been investigated uh, the committee could have made attempts to reach out to these women to speak to them to record their uh, submissions and to see if they have any evidence come kind of a report because uh, the fact is that if nine women are saying the same thing about somebody it is in all probability it must have happened but how do you prove it how do you prove it in the court of law why is it that these women don't want to fi uh, file a formal complaint and frankly i am the women commission head i don't really blame them if they uh, if they chose not to because you see once the uh, girl gets raped by uh, say an individual or uh, some men and then after that the system actually rapes you uh, over the over years and years and years if you look at poxo the poxo act is very clear that within one year the justice justice has to be delivered but even this eight month old baby who was raped in 2018 january yet uh, she is uh, she hasn't got justice till now even her case yeah. is still pending yeah. at the stage of prosecution evidence so you see the systems of the country has failed and i think Absolutely. that there is a complete Absolutely. lack of political will i think that it is very easy to set up a committee to look into each of these allegations to interact with these survivors to understand their point of view that why is it that they were they refrained from fo uh, filing a formal complaint and in many cases even a f uh, formal complaint was filed and no action was taken absolutely see, I, 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 yeah sorry uh, sorry, to, sorry, interrupt uh, sorry to interrupt you swati we let me just uh, put your mic on mute. Uh, we just lost uh, your visual at that uh, in the last couple of minutes, but I think what you were saying was so important that you have to understand why more and more women are not uh, uh, having faith in the justice system. It's not me too that's failed, it's the entire system. I just want to say thank you to you uh, because no other uh, sort of, you're not, you know, we're not seeing the institutions speak up against what's happened with Sajid Khan. As far as I can tell you, the only one who's, do, who's done that. So Swati Malibal, thank you for raising your voice uh, for women who are, who are maybe feeling, feeling too traumatized, feeling traumatized, to, traumatized speak to speak for themselves thank you very much more power to you and we have to keep fighting the good fight thank you and take care it's great to see you here thank you for watching our work if you haven't subscribed yet don't forget to click the bell icon and subscribe to Mojo's story and support independent robust journalism